Hey folks, it's Stefan here. Welcome to another Pathfinder Adventure Card Game Skull and Shackles episode. This week, Jarrell, Ranzak, and Lyrion are taking on the Grindylo and the Whale. The inhabitants of the Shackles don't typically take well to visitors, especially those who come to steal riches. Beat back the squamous hordes of goblin-like Grindylos and show their selfish queen that pirates take what they please. The villain is the Brine Brood Queen, the henchmen are Riptide Grindylos, during this scenario, after you build the location decks, each character shuffles one random ally from her deck face down into an ally pile. When you defeat a henchman, add the top card of the ally pile to your hand. At the end of the scenario, banish the ally pile. Well, I've actually already done that. So we have the ally pile has three cards here, one from each of the characters. Our ship is over here at Riptide Cove. To draw the opening hands, we'll shuffle the decks just to make sure that those are good to go and draw opening hands. And now let's take a look at the locations. Riptide Cove. At this location, if you would succeed at a check to acquire a boon, re-roll the dice. The boon is acquired based solely on the results of the second die roll. When closing, summon and defeat the henchman Riptide Grindylo. There's three monsters here. Chapel. There are no monsters here. At this location, if you play a spell that has the divine trait, you may immediately draw a card. When closing, banish a card that has the Divine Trait. And any blessing has the Divine Trait, so that's one way to do, cover that. The Hatchery has four monsters. When you encounter a Bane that has the Goblin or Aberration Trait, shuffle a random monster into another open location. When closing, summon and defeat a random monster. The Sea Caves has two monsters. At the start of your turn, succeed at a Constitution or Fortitude 6 check or bury a card. When closing, summon and defeat a random monster that has the Aquatic Trait. And I've actually separated the aquatic monsters here. And Mangrove Swamp, two monsters. During your exploration, if you defeat a bane that has the aquatic trait, you may explore again. Succeed at a constitution or fortitude six check to close. Well, Ranzak is our best constitution with a d12 and fortitude plus one. And Jarell would be second with a d6 plus three for her fortitude. Jarell is going to start at the Riptide Cove, and Ranzak and Lyrion will start at the Hatchery. First card is a Blessing of the Gods. Nothing to do at the start here, so Jarell will just explore. And she finds a Shackled Sorcerer. Check to defeat Combat 8. The difficulty to defeat is increased by the adventure deck number of the current scenario. So that's going to go up by 1. This should be a 9. Before you act, the Shackled Sorcerer deals 1 fire damage to you. Which is a bit annoying, means we have to discard something right away. So I guess our poor friend Ambrose Frischgut's croup is going to be discarded for the damage. Jarell will use her ability that says, For your check that has or is against a card that has the finesse trait, you gain the skill melee dexterity plus 2. Her dexterity is already a d10 plus 1. She will use her cat nine tails, which has the finesse trait. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength or melee skill plus 3d4. So we'll be rolling a d10 plus 3d4 plus 3. And we get a 15. So Shackled Sorcerer is defeated. It says after you act, the Shackled Sorcerer deals one structural damage to your ship. But Jarell's power says reduce structural damage to your ship by one. So that doesn't happen. She will reset her hand. Play passes to Ranzak who gets a Blessing of Mesmara, which would add, discard this card to add two dice to any check that has the swashbuckling trait. At this location, when you encounter a Bane that has the Goblin or Aberration trait, shuffle a random monster into another open location. This is an aquatic animal, but it doesn't have Goblin or Aberration. Crocodile, check to defeat combat 13. If the check to defeat has the cold trait, add 1d6 to it. If undefeated, shuffle this card into a random open location, if it came from one. Well, Renzak has his Harpoon. Gives him an extra bonus against aquatic monsters. This says, for your combat check, reveal this card to use your dexterity or range skill plus 1d6. Add another 1d8 if the Bane has the aquatic trait. So that's going to be a d10 plus a d6 plus a d8. But we do have a Blessing of the Gods in our hand, which we can use as the car top card of the Blessings pile, which says... Discard this card to add two dice to any check that has a swashbuckling trait. We do have the swashbuckling trait because the harpoon has the swashbuckling trait. So now we'll be rolling 3d10 plus a d6 plus a d8. Uh, 
And a total of 24 is more than enough to defeat a 13. So that crocodile is defeated. And he'll go into the aquatic monster's deck because he's an aquatic monster. Ranzak does not have a way to explore again, so he will reset. Play goes to Lyrion. And she gets a blessing of Gozra. Discard, discard to add two dice to any check to close a location. She draws a Falcata plus one. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength or melee skill plus 2d4 plus one. It requires a strength or melee of 10. Her strength is a d4, so there's no way she's going to acquire this card. And she doesn't want to spend her blessing to explore right now, so play goes back to Jarell. And it's an Acolyte. Arcane, Divine, Charisma, Diplomacy, 6. Well, we have a Charisma of D8. If you would succeed at a check to acquire a boon, re-roll the dice. The boon is acquired based solely on the second roll. So even if we make the successful check here with a D8, we will have to roll again. And we do, actually. We, make it, we get a 7. So now we have to re-roll that. Clear it out. Put another D8 out there. And that time we get a 1. So we do not acquire the Alkalite. Play goes to Ranzak. And he receives a blessing of Milani. Discard this card to add two dice to any non-combat dexterity or wisdom check. He explores, and he finds a buckler. Constitution, fortitude, plus three. For him, that is a d12 plus one. And he gets a seven. So he does acquire the buckler. He'll just discard this buckler and pass play to Lyrion. She also gets a blessing of Milani. And encounters a barrier. Hull damage. Check to defeat Intelligence Craft 6. The difficulty to defeat this barrier is increased by the adventure deck number of the current scenario, if any. So it's a 7. Okay. Our ship is potentially going to be dealt 1d4 structural damage. Which we'd prefer not to have happen. Unfortunately, my intelligence is only a d6. But I have a Blessing of Abadar. Discard this card to add 2 dice to any check to defeat a barrier. So we will do that. So now we'll be rolling 3d6 to get a 7. And we do get that, so we beat this. She resets. Back to Jarell. And it's a pistol plus 1. Dexterity range craft 8. A d10 plus 1 to get an 8. I don't think that it's um, enough that we want to spend a blessing on it. And she gets a 1. She's going to discard the Besmarn Priest. Discard this card to explore your location. Add the swashbuckling trait to your non-combat checks during this exploration. And she encounters a dolphin. Wisdom survival 8. Well, it's a d8 plus 3. And we get another 1, so we don't acquire it. She resets her hand. Back to Ranzak, who gets a blessing of Achikek, which is 2 dice to defeat a villain or henchman. And he actually encounters a henchman. A Riptide Grindylo. Check to defeat combat 11. Okay, so first this is an aberration and a goblin. So when you encounter a bane that has the goblin or aberration trait, shuffle a random monster into another open location. Well, I've split the monster deck. So I'm going to roll a d6. So 1 through 3, it'll be a regular monster. And 4 through 6, it'll be an aquatic. Okay, it's going to be an aquatic, so we'll shuffle this. Another open location. So there are four open locations. I'll roll a d4 to see which location it goes to. It goes to location two. Okay, we've taken care of that check. Now back to the Riptide Grindylo. The Riptide Grindylo may not be evaded. If undefeated, succeed at a Constitution or Fortitude 6 check or bear the top 1d4 cards of your deck. This is Combat 11. He does have the aquatic trait, so Ranzak can continue to use his harpoon. So a d10 plus a d6 plus a d8 right now for his base check. And Jarell is going to spend her Blessing of the Gods to use the Blessing of Achikek, which means that Ranzak will now be rolling 3d10 plus a d6 plus a d8. Still pretty low rolls, but he has enough to defeat the Grindylo. And so now he can attempt to make a close of this location. It says summon and defeat a random monster. So again, we'll roll a d6. And one through three, it'll be a regular monster. And that's what it is. And the random monster is Rat Swarm. Check to defeat combat eight. 
If you do not defeat the rat swarm by at least four, shuffle it into the deck it came from. Still counts as defeated. Okay, so that's not going to affect this because it was summoned. So he's going to be a d10 plus a d8. Do we want a blessing for this? We only have one on the table and it's a blessing of air still, which would be overkill. So we're just going to go with the d10, d8 to get an eight. And we got 12. So the rat swarm is defeated. And that is one location closed. When permanently closed for the rest of the scenario at all locations, the difficulty to defeat monsters that have the goblin or aberration trait is increased by two. Oh, maybe this wasn't the best place to start. Should have read that in the first place. Oh, well. So we'll just have to remember that. But we actually got through that location with only encountering one monster. So that's, that's pretty nice. That will be the end of Ranzak's turn. Over to Lyrion. She now needs to move. She's going to move over to the Mangrove Swamp, and she encounters a Potion of Heroism. Check to acquire Intelligence Craft 7. Well, she has a D6 for Intelligence, so she cannot acquire that without a Blessing. And even with a Blessing, she wouldn't have a great chance to do it. What is the effect? Display this card and choose a character at your location. When displayed, add 1 D6 to that character's checks. Banish this card at the end of your turn. That's an interesting effect. Well, I don't think we want to spend a blessing on it right now, so we're just going to send it back to the box. She does not have a way to explore again, so play goes to Jarell, who gets Caden Kaelin. Discard this card to add two dice to any non-combat strength or constitution check. And she encounters Caltrops. Check to acquire Dexterity 4. So for her, that's a d10 plus 1. She gets a 7, so she does acquire the Caltrops. Unfortunately, she doesn't have a way to explore again without using the Blessing of Air still, so we're not going to do that. Play will move to Ranzak, who gets a Blessing of Phrasma. He's going to move over with Lyrion to the Mangrove Swamp. And on his exploration, he encounters Barroom Brawl. Strength, melee, dexterity, 5. The difficulty to defeat this barrier is increased by the adventure deck number of the current scenario, if any, which means it goes up by 1. Each character at this location encounters this barrier. Each character that does not defeat this barrier is dealt one plus the adventure deck number, if any, in combat damage. If any character defeats this barrier, it is defeated. Well, his dexterity is a d10. I guess he will use the blessing of Zogmugut to discard this to add one die to any check. So now it's 2d10 to get a six. And we get a seven, so he defeats it. If any character defeats the barrier, it is defeated. So Lyrion does not need to encounter it. He has no way to explore again, so he will reset his hand. And play goes to Lyrion, who gets a blessing of Gorum. Discard this card to add two dice to any combat strength check. She encounters a pistol plus one. Dexterity rangecraft eight. Well, it's a d8 plus four for her. To potentially get another weapon, so that's an eight. And she does get that. She so does pick up another pistol plus one. Doesn't really help her at the moment though. She doesn't have a way to explore again, so she will discard that pistol. Play goes back to Jarell. And Jarell encounters the Riptide Grindylo. Check to defeat 11. He may not be invaded. All right, we're going to recharge the eye patch, which gives us 1d4 and the swashbuckling trait to a check to acquire an ally or defeat a bane or a ship. She is going to use the Cat and Nine Tails. Melee skill plus 3d4. Her melee skill is a d10 plus 3. Yeah, Ranzak will give her a Blessing of Phrasma to make it 2d10 plus 3d4 plus 3. And easily beats the Riptide Grindylow on that. But the location itself says summon and defeat the henchman Riptide Grindylow to close. So now she has to fight him again. She's going to use her own Blessing of Aristotle this time, still sticking with the Cat Nine Tails. So now it's going to be 3d10 and 3d4 to close this location. Or to beat the Riptide Grindylow, which she does. And now we can close the location. Before closing, set aside any boons from this location deck. On closing, shuffle them back into this location deck. Just there, if we wanted to encounter it, I suppose we could. Now it's closed, and she will reset her hand. Back to five cards. Play goes to Ranzak, and he encounters a captain. Check to acquire Constitution Fortitude 4, then Charisma Diplomacy 6. Well, Constitution Fortitude 4 for him is not tough, because that's a d12 plus 1. And he makes that check. 
But now the Charisma Diplomacy 6. He only has a D6 for that. And there are no blessings on the table, so he just needs to get very lucky. Actually, no, he gets the D6 plus 1D4 because this is a boon. So a D6 and a D4. Still not much better. But he gets a 7, so he does acquire this. And now we can use his power when you acquire a boon. Roll a 1d6 on a 3, 4, 5, or 6. You can explore again. We will do that. We, of course, got a 2, so we don't get to explore again. But we just acquired this captain, and we can discard this to explore your location. So we'll do that. And it's another barrier. Ambush. Dexterity, Acrobatics, Wisdom, Perception, 9. The difficulty to defeat this barrier is increased by the adventure deck number of the current scenario, so it's a 10. If defeated, you may explore again. If undefeated, examine the location deck until you find a monster. Encounter it, subtracting one from each die rolled in your check. Banish this card and shuffle the remaining cards. And I now just realized that with the grin below, it would have been increased in difficulty by two for both of those checks, but she blew it away. Dexterity, Acrobatics, Wisdom, Perception, 9. There are no blessings on the table. Okay, just a d10 to get a 9. We did a 9 or a 10, we get a 10. So we defeat this, and we can explore again. And it is the Riptide Grindylo, which we have to remember is now a combat 13. He cannot be evaded. If undefeated, succeed at a constitution or fortitude 6, or bear the top 1d4 cards of your deck. Well, again, Ranzak has the Harpoon. d10 plus a d6 plus d8 to get a 13. It would be nice if we could add to this, but Lyrion is at the same location, so she cannot help. So he's just going to have to make the check himself. To get a 13, and we get 21, which is more than enough to defeat the Riptide Grindylo. An attempt to close the location, which says... Succeed at a Constitution or Fortitude 6 check, which for him is a d12 plus 1. And we get a 9. So that is enough to close this location. There is no effect when permanently closed. And that will be the end of Ranzak's turn. Ah, Masterwork Tools would have been nice. Over to Lyrion. She now needs to move. Chapel is probably the place to leave for last. Although, she would have trouble with this Constitution Fortitude 6 check, so she actually is better off going to the chapel. And she encounters a Swab, Charisma Diplomacy 6, and she has a D6 for Charisma. And she does not acquire the Swab. She will pass play back to Jarell, who has closed this location. She doesn't really care about getting that buckler, so she will go somewhere else here. She'll move over, She'll move over to the Sea Caves. She's not starting her turn here, so she doesn't need to make that check yet. And she encounters Fine Traps, Wisdom Divine 6. Well, she has a D8 for Wisdom. She could, she could acquire it. And she gets 6, so she does, in fact, acquire that. Discard this card to add 2 dice to any check to defeat a barrier, which could be useful, but she doesn't have a way to explore again, so she's not going to be able to do that. She could give it to Ranzak, though. Speaking of Ranzak, he is now going to move over here with Jarrell, and he will explore. And he gets a Blessing of Savannah. Discard this card to add two dice to any non-combat intelligence or charisma check. It would be quite difficult for him to acquire it, though, because it's Intelligence, Charisma 7, or Divine 5. He doesn't have Divine, his Intelligence is a D4, and his Charisma is a D6. Now, he still could make the attempt make the check because he's got a 1d4 to your check to acquire a boon. So if he goes with the charisma, it's a d6 plus a d4 to get a 7. And he gets a 5. So he doesn't make it. And the blessing of Savannah goes back into the box. He still does not have a way to explore again. Over to Lyrion. He's still at the chapel. And she encounters Riptide Grindylo. So he's a 13, remember, because of the effect of uh, the hatchery. There are no blessings on the table, so she will use her Dragon Pistol. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your dexterity or range skill plus 1d6. You may additionally bear this card to add another 2d6. And she will do that, and then she will use her... When you play a weapon that has the firearm trait, if you would bury it or shuffle it into your deck, you may keep it instead, perform that action with another card. She will perform that action with uh, the alchemical glue. So she'll be rolling a d8 plus 3d6 plus four. 
She gets 16, which is enough to defeat the Riptide Grindula. And the closing check, banish a card that has the divine trait, which unfortunately she cannot do. She does not have a divine trait on anything. So that's very unfortunate because that means this location now can only be closed by emptying it. And she doesn't have a way to explore again, so she will reset. Play goes to Jarell, who is going to move over with Lyrion and work on closing this because we now know that the villain is here at the sea cave. So we need to close this location before we encounter him. She encounters arcane armor. Intelligence Arcane 4. Well, we're not too concerned about acquiring that since it's a basic card. Renzak, if he wanted it, could just take it. We don't acquire it. He does not have a way to explore again. Okay, I had forgotten about the during the scenario effect. When you defeat a henchman, add the top card of the ally pile to your hand. At the end of the scenario, banish the ally pile. So we would have uh, distributed all of these now because we've encountered and defeated four Riptide Grindylos. We're just going to distribute these. We'll just discard them now. Mostly so that we don't lose them with that banish effect that happens. But uh, Jarell has no way to explore again. She can discard this card to examine the top two cards of your location deck and put them back in any order. Probably not useful because there's really nothing bad at this location. So she's just going to pass play to Ranzak, who is also going to move over here so that we can get this location closed. And he will explore, and he finds a Coral Capuchin. Wisdom Survival 6, this is an ally. So for him, that is a D4 plus 3, plus another D4 actually. So 2D4 plus 3. And 4 plus 3, so that's 7. He needed a 6. He does acquire the Capuchin. And he has the, when you acquire a boon on your turn, roll 1D6 on a 3, 4, 5, or 6. Explore again, and he gets a 1. Uh, now we need to discard something over to Lyrian, who explores. And she finds an eye patch. Charisma Diplomacy 5. That's a d6 for her. She does not acquire it. She does not have a way to explore again. She's actually going to drop one of these dragon pistols so that she can reset, maybe get something different. There's a Blessing of the Gods, which is good because we're going to need to be able to banish a card with the Divine trait here. Getting down there pretty low though, this is uh, this is going to be tight. So, Blessing of Achikek, which isn't really going to help here because we have to empty this one out. We've already encountered the henchman. So we're back to Jarell's Blessing of the Gods, which she acquires automatically, and she will use that to explore again. And it is Fear, Intelligence, Arcane, Wisdom, Divine, 6. Uh, D8. She gets a 7, so she does acquire Fear. I don't know if that's a card that Ranzak is going to want or not. Discard this card to evade a non-villain monster and shuffle it into an open location of your choice. And over to Ranzak, who explores again. He gets a Blessing of the Gods, gets it immediately, so he will he will explore again. Gets a Blessing of Achikak. Intelligence Craft 7 or Divine 5. He would have 2d4. He would have to get 4s on both. Oh. Nope, he gets a four total. Now back to Lyrion. Phantasmal Minion, Arcane Intelligence 4. She has a d6. And she gets a four, so she does acquire this. We're going to discard the Blessing of the Gods to explore again. Uh, sea Hag, Combat 11. Before you act, succeed in an Arcane or Divine 8, or you may not play spells that have the attack trait. Well, we don't care because we're not going to do that anyway. Uh, we are going to use our Dragon Pistol and use its berry effect on the magic buckler. So we will be rolling a d8 plus 3d6 plus 4. Eleven plus 4 is enough to beat the sea hank. We now have an attempt to close the location, banish a card that has the divine trait. We will banish the, f oh, the phantasmal minion in fact doesn't have the divine trait. Well, that's okay. Switch to Jarell. Jarell can now banish Fear, which has the Divine Trait, to close this location. On closing, you may shuffle 1d4 plus 1 cards from your discard pile into your deck. Well, that's going to be good. So 1d4 plus 1. We'll hope for 4, but no, we only get 2 cards. And these are shuffled into the deck. And shuffle that. And she will reset... This location is now closed. Ranzak moves over, and he will explore. Finds a Blessing of Balani, Dexterity, Wisdom 7, or Divine 5. 
Well, he has a dexterity of d10, so he could potentially acquire that. Well, hold on, this is a boon, so he actually gets another d4. So now he gets six, but he needs a seven, so he didn't acquire it still. He does not have a way to explore again. Lyrian will now move over, and she encounters Rosie Cuswell. Charisma Diplomacy 6. It would be really nice to acquire her because we could explore again. And nothing will help us acquire her, so it's just a straight D6. And we do not acquire that. But she does have the Quartermaster. Discard this card to explore your location. Add the swashbuckling traits to your non-combat check, so we'll do that. Find a Bucket Brigade. Constitution Fortitude 6. You may recharge any number of allies. For each ally recharged, add 1d4 to your check to defeat this barrier. Each character at this location must succeed at a check to defeat this barrier or be dealt two fire damage. The barrier is defeated or undefeated based solely on your check. All right, well, that's not great. Um, Constitution Fortitude 6. She only has a d6 plus 1. Again, there are no blessings on the table, and she just discarded her ally. So for a good roll, we do not get it. We get a two, so she is going to take two fire damage, which we will take on the Phantasmal Minion and the armor. If undefeated, leave this barrier face up on the location deck. Characters at this location encounter this barrier as their first exploration each turn. If you start your turn at this location, your ship is dealt one structural damage. While Ranzak still has a chance to defeat this, he may recharge any number of allies. He gets an extra D4 for that. So he doesn't really need to do that. He's already got a masterwork tools, doesn't he? Recharge this card to defeat a barrier whose highest difficulty to defeat is 14 or lower, which this is. So he'll just recharge his masterwork tools, and he doesn't take any damage. But now this, car this card stays here, and that is the end of Lyrion's turn, leaving us only three blessings in the deck. Jarell moves over. She now has to encounter the Bucket Brigade. Constitution Fortitude 6. Well, she can recharge the Besmarn Priest to get her a D6 plus a D4 plus... Three. And she does make it, so this is defeated. But that was her first exploration, and she doesn't have anything else to do, so she's going to use a spyglass. Discard this card to examine the top two cards of your location deck and put them back in any order. The best thing we can do here. Okay, and that worked out. So we're going to put the Constrictor Snake on the bottom, and the Villain will go on top. With only one blessing left in the deck, Ranzak will encounter the villain. The Brine Brood Queen, which is actually two more difficult, right? Because Goblin and Aberration. So she'll be a 15. She may not be evaded. Before you act, summon and encounter the villain, the whale. If you defeat the whale, the Brine Brood Queen deals one acid damage to each character at your location. Okay, well, we have to encounter the whale here first. The whale may not be evaded. If undefeated, succeed at a Constitution or Fortitude 6 check or discard the top 1d4 cards of the Blessings deck. Well, then that would lose the game right there. He's a Combat 11, except that he is also a Goblin Aberration, so he's a Combat 13. But he does have the Aquatic trait, and Ranzak does have his Harpoon. And he also has the Coral Capuchin. Reveal this card and discard another card to add 1d6 to your combat check, or 1d10 if the monster has the aquatic trait. So we have to figure this out here. They both have the aquatic trait. He's going to be able to use the harpoon for both. She has a blessing of Agikek, so we'll definitely want to use that. This still counts as a villain. Jarell is not going to be able to help here. We'll use the harpoon, so it's going to be a d10 plus a d6 plus a d8. We're also going to use the Coral Capuchin. So it's 2d10 plus a d6 plus a d8 to get 13 for that whale. 2d10, d8, d6. And we get a 16, so we do defeat the whale. So he goes back, and now we return to Brian Brood Queen. If you defeat the whale, she deals one acid damage to each character at your location. That's okay. We've got plenty to take the damage with. That's the damage dealt. And now she is a combat 15. Lyrion is going to spend the blessing of Achikek, giving Ranzak now 3d10 plus a d6 plus a d8. Oh, and the number of ones showing up, but thankfully we have a 9 and an 8 to balance those out. 
So we do defeat the Brine Brood Queen, and once again, Jarell, Ranzak, and Lyrion are victorious. And we get the two loot cards that are here. So that's Besmar's Tricorn, which is an item. Reveal this card to add one to your constitution, fortitude, wisdom, or survival check, or 1d8 to that check while on a ship. Recharge this card to add 1d8 to a constitution, fortitude, wisdom, or survival check attempted by a character on a ship at your location. The Vindictive Harpoon. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your dexterity or rain skill, plus 1d6 plus 1. You may additionally bury this card for another 2d6. Add another 1d8 if the Bane has the aquatic trait. Well, that's going to replace someone's harpoon for sure. That's a very good card. So either Jarell or Ranzak will pick that up. And our ship had a plunder card, which turns out to be Frostbite, which is just a basic spell, so not a big deal there. Okay, well, that is that for Grindylo and the Whale. And uh, please check out my other series for Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, where I'm playing The Wrath of the Righteous, which is the new set that just came out this year. And that's all about uh, demons and abyssal planes. So if you're enjoying the content here, you might want to check that out. I'm going to be doing uh, Skeleton Shackles will continue to be on Sundays. And the Wrath of the Righteous will be on Wednesday. So split those up halfway through the week. So that's two shows that you can watch each week uh, for the Pathfinder Adventure card game. And I hope you do tune in and enjoy those. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to me on YouTube so you know when my other videos are being posted. And uh, consider sharing this with your friends so that I can get some more people watching these videos. Thanks again for watching, folks. And I will talk to you next time. Hey folks, just quickly one thing that I wanted to do. I've got a poster here to give away. This is one of the promotional posters for the Pathfinder Adventure card game uh, for Skull and Shackles. And you can see it's got the artwork from the front of the box. And it does, if you scroll down far enough, see Skull and Shackles on the bottom there. I'm going to be giving this poster away to what I deem to be the best goblin rhyme that uh, you submit in the comments for this video. So it's pretty simple. Just come up with a goblin rhyme and submit that in the comments for the video and I will send this poster to the winner of that uh, contest. Okay, here are a couple of examples from cards that I took from Rise of the Rune Lords because it has a lot more goblins in it. So uh, one of the villains, his song was got big crown, got big knives, got big gems for goblin wives, me big chief, me bi him big gecko, nugget make your face a reco. Rip Nugget and Stickfoot. He's referring to himself there at the, at the end as Nugget. And uh, Grindylo. Yummy squid, salty, tough, tasty because they fight so rough. But if squid have goblin grin, run like hell, he ain't your kin. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of what uh, to do for a goblin song.